Hello everybody and welcome back to Oxygen Included. Today we are going to tackle one of the best, if not the best, early game cooling solutions in the entire game, and that is boiling ethanol. The basic idea here is that ethanol, a gas, has a specific heat capacity of 2.148, but ethanol, the liquid, has a specific heat capacity of 2.46. And in addition to that, there is a slight buffer that the game gives to win liquids or gases change phase. So this ethanol is not actually going to condense at 78.4 degrees Celsius. It's going to condense closer to around 76 degrees Celsius. Likewise, the uh, ethanol liquid is not going to boil off at 78.4 degrees Celsius. It's going to boil off closer to around 81 degrees Celsius. So there's a little bit of buffer that the game gives to win the liquids or gases change phase. And by using this in combination with the difference in specific heat capacity, we can create a very simple, very powerful system that deletes heat from our base simply by uh, using this change in specific heat capacities. This is the entire system right here. It's as simple uh, as it looks. There's basically just insulated liquid pipes with some radiant liquid pipe at the top right here leading through a thermal aqua tuner. I have, in this instance, a liquid reservoir, which is full of polluted water, and that's kind of what's ending up getting cooled down, but you could have this uh, liquid reservoir just be a big system that you're cooling down. The important thing to keep in mind is you can't uh, use this on systems that are too hot because this liquid pipe right here does ultimately need to be able to condense down the ethanol. So you can't cool down something that's say 100 degrees with this system, or you're, at least you're going to have to uh, change the system slightly to accommodate uh, higher temperature cooling. But this is a system that requires no steel. This is a thermal aqua tuner made out of aluminum. It requires no gold amalgam for that matter. You don't need any parts that have any special properties. Here we're using aluminum because that's what's going to be typically available in a forest biome start where you're going to have access to ethanol. But it's a very simple build, very easy. And this right here, I estimate, deletes about 85 kilo DTUs per second. That's insane. 85 kilo DTUs per second is basically the same power efficiency as an ice maker. An ice maker only takes 60 watts, but deletes four kilo DTUs per second. This is a little bit better than that. We're taking 1200 watts to run this thermal aqua tuner, and we are deleting 85 kilo DTUs per second. That's, that's a little bit more than what we would get out of an ice maker. And this requires no duplicate labor, no real effort. This is a very simple system. In fact, the only reason why I didn't build this system in my maximum difficulty auction not include Let's Play was that I had the expectation that this system would get nerfed or changed or balanced in some way. And I didn't want my entire base relying upon something like this because then the entire base would break as soon as the game got patched. But it's been 200 cycles in our maximum difficulty knock oxygen included let's play. Go check that out, by the way. Um, and nothing's changed. In fact, if anything, the system has gotten better because one of the changes that they've made is they decreased the thermal conductivity of ethanol. This used to be about 15 times higher. And now, because it's lower, there's less efficiency loss due to conduction of heat from this cold area down here or up here down to this hot area down here, right? So the system's only gotten more efficient over time. Nothing has been changed. I was expecting them to change the specific heat capacity of ethanol gas to something like 2.46 or vice versa, change the, the heat capacity of the ethanol liquid to 2.148. But none of that has come down the pipe. And so here we have access to simply one of the best systems. Again, no duplicate labor involved, very power efficient, uses materials that you're going to be able to find in any forest biome. Here we're just using aluminum, which we're going to have easy access to. You will need to refine some aluminum to make this work, but that's basically it. This is just aluminum ore straight up. Um, very simple, very easy to use. To pad the time on this video a little bit, we're going to discuss a few other options that you have for systems like this, even though this one I think is just plainly the best. The first is simply a system that uses a thermal regulator. Uh, here, this one is made out of steel. It should be made out of gold amalgam. You will need gold amalgam, though, uh, for your thermal regulators because while a thermal aqua tuner has an overheat temperature of 125 degrees uh, as their base overheat temperature, thermal regulators have a base overheat temperature of uh, 75 degrees. So you will need uh, gold amalgam or steel, and that makes the build a little bit less attractive as a result because part of the idea here is that no plastic, no gold amalgam, no steel, are exactly the conditions that you're starting off with in the early game in a forest biome. But this is a viable system as well. It's less efficient. Uh, here we have this basically running uh, hydrogen, which is the best coolant that you're going to have available to you in the early game. It's about four kilo DTUs per second. So on par with an ice machine, even though it costs 240 watts to run. So that is another alternative that you have available to you. Um, but this one is just less good because it's less efficient. If you can, go with the thermal aqua tuner 
and uh, don't look back because this is just not quite worth it, I think, in my opinion. And then we have monstrous systems like this, which aren't really that useful, and I'll get into why. Because even though this thing is providing a huge amount of cooling, all that cooling is being focused on the hot end of whatever it is that we're trying to cool. The basic idea here is that we have something similar to this tube right here, where we are um, having ethanol gas uh, condense on one end. Only the difference is we've put the cold end down here and the hot end up here. So the ethanol gas is traveling down here and it is, it is exchanging heat with these radiant liquid pipes. All these pipes have been throttled to one kilogram per second. This is a common trick that we've seen in a lot of other builds that I've done on the channel. Uh, but the basic idea here is that we can now superheat this ethanol to whatever temperature you want. So as we go up here, this ethanol is going all the way up to 1300 degrees. Right, and it's remaining in liquid form. All that heat is being deposited into the ethanol while it's remaining in the liquid form. So instead of relying upon the sort of the buffer that we have between condensation and boiling to generate our cold in this system as we're using right here, here we're actually just heating up the ethanol to crazy amounts and using that uh, difference, that change in specific heat capacity at the very top here to generate our cooling. This is an insane solution, right? Here's a big old body of magma and we can see this in real time ticking down. You know, 1522, now it's gonna be 1521, and it's just gonna continue ticking down like this. This is incredible amount of cooling that we're able to provide for what is effectively just 240 watts. This system down here, occasionally you're going to need to top off the cooling on the system, so every once in a million years, these doors will close, and this super coolant will transfer a little bit of cold or will absorb a little bit of heat is the better way to say it from the system. Here we go right now. And then brief, just a brief touch is all it needs and then it's back to cooling things down. Whereas this magma just continually falls, falls, falls. We're already down to uh, 1,515, 1,514, right? In real time, we're watching this thing fall down. Here's the reason why it isn't super useful though. It's really nice that this system can cool down this really hot stuff for really cheap, just 240 watts, but we already have something that cools down super hot things for really cheap in terms of power, and that's called a steam turbine. A steam turbine would take this heat source that we have right here and actually generate power from it. So the fact that we're spending any power at all, and in fact doing a whole bunch of work to create this build to get our cooling, doesn't really make a lot of sense. We could just, instead of having this whole contraption right here, slap some steam turbines on the side, throw some water down here, and be good to go. So there is some downside to this. It is kind of cool, but it's not really more effective than other things, right? Same with this. This is fine, but I'd probably still rather use an ice machine. This is an actually broken system that is insanely good, right? 85 kilo DTUs for 1200 watts, no duplicate labor, no special parts, no gold, no plastic, no anything is great. But there are there is some interesting things you can do with systems like this and, uh, I kind of like this just for posterity's sake. So that's the basic gist of the video. You have some alternative systems here that you can work on if you want to. Uh, one focused on getting the ethanol super hot before it's allowed to turn into a gas, right? Delaying that boiling until it's reached, you know, some insane temperature. You have basically the same system, but a little bit less efficient, just using a thermal regulator. This is less good, one, because it's less power efficient, but also because it will require you to use gold amalgam or steel whereas the thermal opportunity solution is everything that you could possibly want. Again, very power efficient, very effective, doesn't require any special parts, and honestly should have been patched out of the game a while ago. This is not new. Clay has patched things like this before because what they do to, to figure out the properties of things is they go and they look up in, in basically a table and they say, what is the actual property of the thing? And the thing about that is that um, materials will have different specific heat capacities at different temperatures, and so ethanol, the gas, is going to have a specific heat capacity that's going to be different than ethanol, the liquid, in large part because the temperature has changed, right? That, that when ethanol is in the gaseous form, its temperature is different. So they went and they looked up in a book and they said, okay, what is the specific, specific heat capacity of ethanol? Let's go and, and put that into the game. What's and, and they took it for ethanol gas and ethanol liquid. I kind of expected them to go back and say, well, for game balance reasons, we probably shouldn't have these things be different, right? Because that's what they've done for every other liquid, every other gas in the game. You're going to have, with very small exception, the same specific heat capacity between phases, right? They, they find one that they like, they, they say that's the one we're going to use. They haven't done that yet here. 
And so we still have access to this insane system, and I'm not sure they're ever going to patch it. I, I think they're focused on other things. It might be a long time before this thing is, is patched, and it's possible you consider this an exploit, but the only exploit is is in the game itself, right? It, it's using the numbers that the game gives us. It's using 2.148 as our specific heat capacity for the ethanol gas, and 2.46 for the specific heat capacity of the ethanol liquid. Um, if that's the exploit, that just these numbers are wrong, and in a sense they aren't wrong, then then I guess this is an exploit. But otherwise, this is a system that relies upon no trickery other than that. It's just using the game as it's written with, with no unintended things involved. So in any case, incredibly powerful system. I'll show the plumbing one more time. Very simple. This is insane. I don't know. I should have been using this in my base from the start. It would have made my maximum difficulty Let's Play a lot easier, but I was just so paranoid that I thought they were going to nerf this that I didn't do it. And if they aren't going to nerf it, then I guess people should be using it and the word should get out. This system is insanely good. If you find yourself on Oasis or Iridio and you want to get a lot of cooling really fast, this is a fantastic way to do it. No duplicate labor, very easy parts to find, very power efficient. So much that can be said about this. It's fantastic. Uh, go and build it now. All right, that's it for me. This is the end of the episode. I'll catch you guys next time.